This dumpling is way too mushy on the inside. Oh, no, 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 no. I just want to hold you. I just want to look into your eyes and tell you that I want you. You know you make me feel so alive. Can't stop thinking about you day and night. Love it when you kiss me. Love it when we touch. Every time I'm down here, you make me smile. You're the solution. You are. Hey guys, another thing I love about Singapore is the Michelin star scene. Michelin stars are awarded to food stalls that sell roast chicken. But what I love about Singapore's Michelin star scene is that it includes everything. You could go to a Michelin star hawker stall that sells noodles or one of those fancy schmancy places I was talking about and basically everything in between. And typically I don't go to restaurants just because they got a Michelin star or two or three, but it does make you curious. So in this video, we're going on a Michelin star food tour. The first place I'm going to is called Burnt Ends. And this is a, a location near Chinatown. This is an Australian style barbecue place with one Michelin star. I love barbecue and Australians are supposed to be some of the best at it. I think this is a great place to start our eating adventure. A few moments later. All right, couldn't get a table until later tonight. So I figure I go grab some tea. A lot of tea bars in this country. Oh, this is a really pretty tea place. Oh my gosh. You guys sit right here. So you take your shoes off first. The place is so pretty. Oh my goodness. Look at all these different types of tea. Wow. This just so much chili platter. So this is a book of snacks. So they were just telling me the Queen of England came here. I'm gonna order the same tea she did. It's their most recommended tea. They heat the water up right here. And this is my tea platter. I basically know what all this stuff is for because I went to the tea shop in Taiwan already. There's a procedure you gotta follow, but this is so cool. Now the tools for serving tea is very important. It's a little back scratcher. I, I'm just kidding, seriously, don't, don't scratch your back with this. This is to scoop the tea from the tea bag. This is to pick up these little smelling cups because they're gonna be really, really hot. And this is used to scrape the tea from the tea pot. And this little guy is to unclog the spout. A little snack before we go to Australian barbecue. the pot and then you pour it into this because if you just leave it in here it's gonna not be equal and then you pour it into your smelling cup make sure to sniff it yeah. so you can drink it you gotta hold the tea like this two fingers and another finger middle finger on the bottom and you're supposed to sip it three times this was the one ordered by Queen Elizabeth you get it it's royalty I ordered some snacks and their number one house special. You guessed it, a TA. Oh, that's awesome, TA. Oh, this is really good jelly. Everything in this, oh, it's so fragrant too. This place is so good. I know this is like a Michelin star restaurant video, but come here and, oh, this, this jelly is hard. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is, this is really, oh jeez, did I break this? This is really hard jelly. The reason why it's so fragrant is poor tea jelly and the hard one is lychee jelly. Still good, not as good. Oh gosh. So you got one that's really soft. You got one that's hard and this is elastic heat. It's like eating jelly at Goldilocks house. It's okay. Still, I think poor. This is the clear winner here. So eat some jelly, drink some tea. You know what, this is the life. I could just sit here all day and just do this. But now I gotta go eat like barbecue, food problems, you know? Most of the seats are on this huge bar and everyone is just cooking right in front of you. All right, this place is definitely not cheap. 
So what's cool about this place is that if you're as indecisive as me about what to order, the chef will create something for you on the spot. They'll ask your dietary restrictions and he'll make something for you. They use charcoal grill, which brings out the best flavor of anything barbecue. And this is caviar over quail egg. I'm not a huge caviar person, but that was just like the softest little quail, soft quail egg cooked in everything that's good about the ocean. At the same time, smoky and explosive. This is Australian Wagyu he's chopping up, and it's so cool because you can see everything happening right in front of you. It's not a boring moment. So it's great if you're on a day or something, you run out of things to say, just enjoy the show. Second dish, this is really interesting. It's a flatbread, but the white on top is fish roll and sourdough bread puree. Wow, that's just the lightest thing. The top is just very mild onions and dill. Toasted perfectly with just a slight bitterness from the char. It's creamy, slightly sour. You definitely get the hints of the ocean. The fresh veggies on top just, just brings like a garden quality to it. This is basically like eating the garden of the sea. Third course, white pepper chicken neck with just a scallion sitting on top. And look at this, as I'm dragging this chicken around, you can see all the juice that's leaving behind on the stone plate. That is a spicy pepper. What I love most about that piece was just the amount of smoke that was in there. Again, that char brings a slight hint of bitterness to it. And that chicken, as I expected, any juicier, that would be chicken soup. This is eel over bone marrow. Look at this. Just a couple of pieces of buttery fat. Sesame seeds, green onions on top over the most pillowy, lightest white toast, which they baked the toast here themselves. Bon appetito. I should call that dish snowman in the summer because all that thing does is melts. The eel is almost as buttery as the bone marrow itself, but everything just disappears completely, including the bread, which is the perfect foundation because it's just as soft as the ingredients on top. That bite basically melted my heart away. This is my tucky mushroom with a soy cured egg yolk on white porridge. Eating that, it's like watching that part of the Lion King where Mufasa died. I think I got tears in my eyes. Mushroom is delicate, grilled to absolute freaking perfection. So you got a change of texture here from the crunchy mushrooms to the creamy kanji and yolk. It becomes transcendent. This is ultimate. King crab, white truffle on top, butter. So this is what they were cooking over the charcoal at the beginning of the meal. So you got capers, scallions, and alba white truffle on top. There's a little lemon juice on top. Hail to the king. I just had a piece of the crab meat, and even that on its own, without the capers, it's just the sweetest, juiciest, piece of crab meat. This thing is soaked in butter, but it's not greasy. It's just a perfect amount of flavor and creaminess. Oh my God. The truffle brings such an earthy flavor to this dish. The capers does a great job of bringing another dimension of flavor, that sourness to this buttery king crab. So every bite is never boring. So we got pork loin with homemade ramen sauce, a little bit of raisin, and then the steak, Australian Wagyu. And you got the lean slices and then the fatty pieces as well. I've had American Wagyu. I never had Australian Wagyu, but look at the marbling. Pork loin, that is a pretty piece of bacon. Dip it a little bit, the ramen sauce. This is not a melting your mouth type of pork. There's a lot of chew. And I'm glad because every bite is like the flavor doubles. So clean, juicy, and melty, slightly gelatinous. And the sweetness of the raisin sauce highlights the nice porky flavor of the bacon. Now to the main event, the Wagyu. This is like the food equivalent of Forrest Gump for me. And the way they cook this, there's so much smoke 
and that makes this so much better. And there's fatty pieces here as well. I guess the burnt ends, if you will. I love this so very much. It just tastes char and smoke, and then just fatty liquid gold. I can't get over how good this steak is. This thing tastes better than most kisses I've had in my life. Last dish, and this is a roasted pineapple sabayon. I got it because the guy sitting next to me, he took one bite and he started going crazy. He's like, this is the greatest thing I've ever had in my life. Of course, I had to get it. So this is roasted pineapple. The sabayon is basically eggs and they whisk it over steaming hot water. God, this is beautiful. If you think your life's complete, not yet. You need to have a five wagyu steak, and then you need to come and try this. Roasted pineapple, first of all, that's already marvelous. The egg and custard is so light and creamy, and it's accented by the citrus flavor of the pineapple. Chocolate fondant with smoked ice cream, and they smoke it for six hours. Oh, look at that river of chocolate. You can see the smoke floating on top of the ice cream. This is the type of smoke I love. I think that's the common theme of this place. Like most dishes I had were very smoky. This place, I feel like it deserves way more than one Michelin star. Because supposedly Michelin star, one is pretty good, two you should make a detour for, three you should come specifically for. I feel like you should come specifically to eat at this place. I like most of my meals to be very inexpensive, but this is really worth the money. Of all the multi-course dinners I've ever had in my life, this is by far the best. Look how ridiculous this is. It looks like something that should be deciding which house kids go to in Hogwarts. It's an orange cinnamon marshmallow. Oh. Mm. Oh, that's so like, this thing is the ultimate marshmallow that should be sitting between a graham cracker and a piece of chocolate. That was a food encore finale for the ages. All I gotta say is this Michelin star adventure is off to a deliciously fabulous start. I gotta go home and hibernate, but we'll continue tomorrow. Hey, good morning. This next place I'm going to, I, I filmed it a little bit on my vlog channel um, a long time ago. I want to give it another try. This is a Michelin star noodle. And there's always a line. Don't be fooled. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of people online, but this is going to be at least an hour wait. So we're waiting in line. There's a guy over there you can order from, and I got everything on the menu. <laughs> it's only like five things. I think I remember this being the, my favorite from last time. They have different types of meat in here. Minced pork, sliced pork, crackles of fish, liver, wontons, and all on top of these eggy noodles soaked in what I remember a vinegary sauce. And this is just a soup version and it's served with rice noodles. Similar ingredients. Oh, a lot of rice noodles. Oh, and by the way, if you've never been to Singapore before, this is how you reserve a seat. When the tissues are showing, don't come a sit in. I wanted to come here again for a couple of reasons. One, this represents the other spectrum of the Michelin scene in Singapore. I mean, there's also Hawker Chan Chicken. I did a review on that already on this channel, so I'm not gonna go there again. But this country is one of the few places in the world where a stall like this can receive global recognition. I'm just gonna dig into these noodles first because I don't want them getting soggy. So same thing in here as you will find in the dry noodles. Wontons, meatballs, pork, kidney. It's just a soup version. A little mix of pork and seafood flavor. It's a pretty mild soup. The chilies actually make a huge difference. Otherwise, I feel like the flavor could be a bit not exciting. The flavor of the broth has not sinked into these noodles. So you have to eat them with a scoop of soup. Otherwise, it's a little bland. The meatball is really nice and bouncy. Love the meatball. A little vinegar and a little soy sauce. Much better. This is one of those noodles. You kind of just gotta mix all the ingredients in and eat it all together. But overall, the flavor is a little too one-dimensional for me. And that's why I got an extra meatballs and soup. I'm gonna toss some of this stuff in. 
actually a soup from the meatball. It's a lot more flavorful than the soup from this noodle dish. Everything working together, this is a lot better now. These are egg noodles, same ingredients, minced pork, pork slices, liver, wontons, and I remember this being the better of the two noodles. Mm, I like this a lot more. Noodles are a lot more chewy, the sauce is a bit vinegary, which is all things I like. Definitely don't need to add really anything else to this. This thing's got plenty of flavor. It is nice to chase it with some soup. If you love seaweed, this is your thing. And I adore the seaweed. The noodle texture is actually very authentic. It's got a nice pork flavor. I love the organy of this from the liver. And the crunchy fish works here much better than it's working in the noodle soup. I think I made a mistake. I don't think I should have done this. I think out of everything I've had, my favorite thing are these meatballs. These are fantastically delicious porky meatballs. And another reason I wanted to come back here was that I remember the first time eating here, my impression was it's good. It's a solid noodle place, but I don't feel like it's really worth the super long wait. In every place that's very popular and I get that kind of feeling, I want to come back and try it again. Just to make sure like I'm not mistaking or maybe the first time I ate there, um, there was just something off. So I've been wanting to come back and try this again. And I think my assessment is pretty much the same as the first time. These are good bowls of noodles. I would love to have them again, but I wouldn't wait an hour or two hours for it. Again, just my own personal opinion. You might eat here and feel completely different. And if you've never been here, I really encourage you to come try it out for yourself. I mean, a food stall getting a Michelin star, that's not an easy thing. And I'm very happy for how well this shop is doing. All right, I gotta finish up because I'm heading to another Michelin star restaurant. And this place is known for one of my favorite dishes in the world. Only problem is it's booked out for two weeks and uh, hopefully from the blessing of the food gods, I can actually get a table. I've been wanting to try out this restaurant forever. Shinsen Haten. This is a, a chain actually from Japan, but this location has two Michelin stars and they're known for, like I said, one of my favorite dishes in the world, the Mapo Tofu. This is food wars all over again. The Mapo Tofu here is supposed to be exceptional. I mean, it's a traditional dish. I'm always curious to see like, who can make a traditional dish that's been around for, I don't know, over a thousand years and make it even better without making it into some sort of fusion thing. And apparently that's what they did here. Can't wait to try this. And I feel bad um, wearing this because uh, I actually had on a nicer shirt this morning, but then on my way to my first food location, I was drinking a bubble tea and spilled it all over the shirt. So this is the only thing I had in my bag as a backup. But if you do come here, <laughs> Dress, dress nicer than this. And there's usually two ways to make this dish. One is without the breading on the chicken. And so this one is breaded first, fried, you see the peppercorn, chili, scallions, garlic all over it. If you want it spicier, just give it a stir. Add more chilies on the bottom. First impression, very well fried. Oh. It's probably the most sophisticated Chongqing spicy chicken I've ever tasted. Perfectly crispy with a hint of sweetness. Usually it's not in this dish, but it's not overwhelming, very subtle. And it kind of does a lot to highlight the other flavors as well. This is the same thing I had in the Philippines. It's basically really thin noodle wrapped around a crispy shrimp and mango filling with mayonnaise on top. A little caviar. Mm, this is so good. This thing is so light and crunchy inside. Just the most tender piece of shrimp. Coated with creamy mayonnaise. This is a pork dumpling with a crystal rice wrapper. Mm. I came here searching for mapo tofu. What I found was something that may be even better. We may just have to anoint this the king of all dumplings. I am shocked at how good this is. This is some transcendent flavored dumpling. And just gonna dip it in a little bit of hot sauce and see what happens. It's the Kurabuda pork. Just think about how good regular pork tastes in dumplings. Now switch that for the king of all pork. And when you take a bite, first impression, you're like, Hmm, this dumpling is way too mushy on the inside. Oh, no, 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 no. This is the Cinderella of all dumplings. That is such a beautiful bowl of dandan noodles. If you see that on the dating website, you'd be swiping right for sure. Miraculous things happen when you have a Japanese restaurant 
create a bowl of dandan noodles. The aroma that's floating from this, which just screams citron. Peppercorn, chilies, scallions. So besides checking off all the boxes of what a great bowl of dandan tastes like, it has to be very nummy, spicy. I know there's different types of dandan. Some are a little soupier than others, but for me, mine's gotta be saucy and dry and, and not too much to soup. What kind of blows all the other dandan noodles out of the water is that they make their own noodles here. The springiest, chewiest, al dente noodles, cooked it and made it into a dandan dish. Oh man, that mapo tofu is a sizzling. This dish is usually never sizzling when it comes to the table. Oh my God, it's like stirring into the world's most delicious volcano. Oh man, look at that. You see how soft the tofu is right away. Red, green, white tofu. So incredibly saucy and thick. This is the consistency you want your mapo tofu to be. And you cannot have mapo tofu without rice. This goes together like a horse and carriage. Oh, that's good. That is a great bowl of mapo tofu. It just tastes luxurious. It tastes like the finest soak in the land. Because one thing I love about mapo tofu is that I want it to be saucy, I want the tofu to be silk and soft, but also I want the taste to linger on my tongue. And that's what the numbing portion of this dish does. Another box that this dish is supposed to check off is the Chinese word guoyin, which means it's, it, it satisfy a huge craving. It hits the spot, if you will. And this thing definitely hits the spot. Every spot, every spot you want is gonna hit it. I can see why this place is two stars. It's beautiful, beautiful restaurant. The environment, ambiance is great. The staff is so incredibly friendly. Usually at a fancy schmancy restaurant cooking very traditional dishes, most of the time it's not gonna taste as good. But this place, they didn't do anything crazy to the dishes. They just made the traditional Sichuan dishes shine on their own. I think that my favorite thing in this meal is the dandan dan noodles. That was just, I mean, I'm still reeling from that dish. And then mapa tofu just made Perfectly. I mean, it's the mapo tofu all other mapo tofu wants to be when they grow up. Pork dumplings, oh, overall, just a great place. I think of the three Michelin restaurants I've been to, I love Burnt Inn's and I love this place. It's, it's completely different menu items. Burnt Inn in this place really just exceeded my expectations. And even Hawker Chan, the cheapest Michelin star meal in the world, it's a pretty good meal for like $3. That's what makes Singapore's Michelin star scene so uniquely fun and interesting is not only do they have like, you know, the really posh restaurants, but also the cheapest meal. Of course, Hill Street noodles kind of missed the mark for me a bit, but overall, this was such a fun food adventure. So 100% recommend this place, Burnt In. Check it out. All the information for all the places I went to is, of course, in my description box below. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, bye.